Queen Victoria, she has worn the crown for the last two years here in Columbus. Will her reign continue? Titans of strength collide on the biggest stage in the sport. The Rogue Iron Game starts now. The eyes of the fitness world are all focused on Columbus, Ohio. The Arnold Sports Festival is an event unlike any other, and the main attractions are about to kick off the Arnold Strongman and Strong Woman Classics. Welcome inside the Columbus Convention Center, everybody, for the Rogue Iron Game. I'm Sean Woodland with Dr. Bill Crawford, Kristen Rhodes, and Jerry Pritchett. And Dr. Bill, I'm going to steal the phrase that you have coined. <laughs> I love it. It perfectly sums up uh, this event and this environment. We are at the high altar of strength. No place I would rather be than right here getting ready for this event. Absolutely. This is red meat for strongman fans. We've got the, beta, we've got the best athletes in the world. We've got the iconic implements, mm -hmm. deadlifts, stones, carrying. It's all here. I'm excited. Yeah, this is just an incredible event, and to have 12 literally of the best women in the world competing this weekend, this huge crowd behind us, it's going to be amazing to watch. Yeah, we're at the pinnacle of strength, fitness, muscle. I was already excited this morning, and now hearing the weights clanging back mm -hmm. there in warm up, seeing Victoria warm up. It just amped it even more. Like, let's get this thing kicked off. This is going to be a lot of fun. We have a lot of big stories for both the men and the women. We'll get to those in just a second. But first, let's talk about the Arnold Sports Festival, because if you have never been here, you've got to make the trip. It's an absolute spectacle from beginning to end. More than 250,000 spectators are expected to walk through the doors here. 20,000 athletes. It's a truly international event and things going on all over the place. I mean, you cannot walk two feet without seeing something that you want to stop and watch. It is a great time. And Jerry, you've had an opportunity to compete on this stage. What's it like to be here at the pinnacle of the sport? It, it's huge. It, it's, it's an honor and a privilege to be here. I, I was lucky enough to come here eight times and compete. You know, it, you know before it was only 10 of us now, there's 11, 12 women. There's still a very small percentage of the strength athletes in the world that get to come on this stage and show their skills. And then, you know, you're doing it in front of that crowd. You know, as you're pulling that deadlift, or you're heading up that ramp, you can hear the dial on that crowd just go up and up and up as those lifts go up. So it's no better than that. What has being on the main stage here at the Arnold Sports Festival, Dr. Bill, done for the sport of strongman? Well, I mean, it's the largest sports festival each year mm -hmm. in the world. And so basically what you're given is an opportunity to have strongman be featured in this wider group of sports. Mm -hmm. So it's put us in mainstream sports. It's also helped to develop the iconic implements. Yeah. This really sets the pace for all the implements that you've seen for the last 20 years. All of a sudden, Apollon's axle's coming on, and then the dumbbells, and then the ramps, and all these different implements that are, get, that, that are used now in strongman in general. So it's given such a platform that it's not only raised strongman in strongman, it's raised strongman inside of the sports world. And Kristen, you've seen firsthand what being here has done for the women's side of the sport. Yeah, it was 10 years ago uh, this weekend, actually, that they brought the women on the stage, the main stage, for the first time. And to be here, and it's just, it's literally, it's magical. I cannot explain being on the stage, you know, pulling, I was the first 600-pound deadlift on the elephant bar ever, and just the, the experience, the camaraderie, the you know, all the hours of training and hard work and to get here and just to showcase it, have the crowd go crazy, there's really nothing like it. This is the best place to do it. It's gonna be a lot of fun over these next two days. Let's take a look at what is on tap for the strong women and the strong men. Here are the events that will play out Friday and Saturday. We have two today. We're going to have three tomorrow. And Jerry, I look at Friday, I'm like, did you, like this is your day, dream day one here. I, I would have killed for this day a few years ago. Yeah, deadlift and frame, two of my best events of, of, of all these. Yeah, I, I would have loved this. So the, the guys, your deadlifters and the frame carry, like, 
Hoff Thor's got to be loving day one here. Chris, and what stands out to you when you look at the, the slate of what awaits these athletes? Oh, I think today, what you know, coming out uh, with that true test of strength today, the elephant bar deadlift, we've got seven women pulling over 600 pounds in training, and we've got world record holder Lucy coming in. It's just going to be an absolutely incredible moment today to witness what happens. Well, let's start with the men's field, and Mitch Hooper comes in as the defending champion, but he is going to have his work cut out for him if he wants to defend that title. We have former champions, former world's strongest men here. It is going to be a lot of fun to watch play out as the Moose looks to hang on to the title. It has to be the deepest field of all time. I think one of the strongest lineups in history where we have five world's strongest man winners. It's ruthless. Any single one of us can win. I think uh, seven strongmen can be in top three. Having the Martins back, you know, the half fours, me, Mitchell, Novikov, all these top guys here to fight it out is going to be special. I only try to compare myself in ability with the absolute best. Mitch Hooper, uh, Thor Bjornsson, Martins, Lisi's, guys that have won it already. Competing against Hathor is really special to me. Getting the opportunity to uh, share the stage with him and compete with him is an incredible honor. With these specific events, I truly believe that Mitchell Hooper and Martin Lissis are going to be my biggest rivals. And then we can't mention him without talking about Mateusz Kieliskowski. Hungry and angry. I know I will lose a lot of points in deadlift because this is my weakness, but we have still four good events for me. I would compare myself to Kielikowski. We both are really explosive athletes. Consistency is really important, especially when it's a field as deep as this. If you can just have a good result in every event, you'll probably win. Mitchell won this competition last year. You have to beat the best guy, and every single person would be lying if they said they don't want to beat him. I'm going to go into this show to do my absolute best in every single event. And if that's enough to win, I'll walk away happy. This is a, this is a list full of boys that are too stupid to quit, and just strong enough to get the job done. They're all very strong, but I'm going to beat them. I don't want to be top 10. I want to be the best. Here are the men who will be vying for the title of Arnold Strawman Classic Champion. You have three men who have won the last five championships and Mitchell Hooper, Martins Lietzis, and Hathor Bjornsson. And then you have six world's strongest men titles in the field. And Dr. Bill, we say this every year we hear how loaded the men's field is, how loaded the men's field is. I mean, we really, really, really mean it this year. This field is absolutely stacked. Absolutely. We talked about, you know, years ago, we talked about the time of the Giants. And now we have the time of the champions. But these guys are still really big. We're moving into a different phase. We, everyone wants to talk about, you know, five-time World's Strongest Men uh, winners here. You know what? We also have three returning champions. Half Thor left as a champion. Martins left as a champion. Mitchell's coming back as a champion. So we've got guys who have never, you know, they don't know what it's like to leave here and losing. So we've got to see how that works also. We have, you know, we're returning with a lot of uh, other athletes. Something we haven't talked about is like the depth of the field. That's going to put points in between the other athletes. And what does that do to the end, uh, end of the day? Well, Mitch Hooper has been so consistent and so dominant uh, here recently. But Jerry, he's never faced Half Thor and Martins at the same time. What does he need to do to keep himself on top of the podium? Well, this will definitely be his big challenge as of yet. But Mitch has to just stay with his strength. And his strength is being consistent. You know, he doesn't win many events, or last year, none at all. But he was consistent enough for the overall. And that's strong, man. That is, that is the key. Mateusz Kieliskowski is a guy who we know can be a threat here. I, I don't think it would be fair to call him a dark horse, but I don't know if he's a favorite, but he could certainly make some noise here. Well, he's never been the champion here. He's always, you know, he's, he's right there. You know, in 2020, he won four out of five events and still didn't pull it out. But these, these events really line up very well for him. He holds the record in the frame carry. He's a prodigious presser. He also holds the record for the number of shoulders at the tombstone. And anyone who saw the first year that he did four reps and the next year five reps were just absolutely astonished by his strength with that event. So these events line up really well for him. If he can hang on to some points in the deadlift and comes on really strong in all the other four events, this could be his, his weekend. I'd love to get both of your thoughts on this too. What, what does it mean to have both Martins and Half Thor back in the field here? It's great. I mean, there's been a lot of buzz. This is not lost on this crowd. We've had so many people come up to us and say, 
We're here because Hathor's back, Martins is back. We've got all these other great champions that are coming in that, you know, to face them as well. So this is not lost on this crowd. This huge crowd, there's a lot of anticipation. A lot of people are here just with that understanding. They're here for that. Yeah, it's definitely amplified the excitement coming in here, having both of them back, you know, and, and, and healthy and, and hungry you know, to, to still show their dominance, yeah. you know. And you look at Hofdor. Hofdor is still only like 34 years old. He's not that old. He, you know, he, even though he's been out of sport for a few years, he's still going to come into his best years of, of strength. And he's arguably, you know, one of the guys that came out of the heaviest era of the Arnold when, it, you know, everything was insanely heavy. So everybody's excited to see how he does against kind of this newer group. Um, and he's confident that he's going to do the same as he is, pick up where he left off. Yeah, it's exactly what I was going to say. He is the three-time Arnold Strongman Classic champion did that between 2018 and 2020. He's won 12 of the 45 events in which he has competed. Now, he left at the top of his game, and as Jerry said, he's looking to pick up right where he left off. Back, back. Keep on it back. Back, back. back. I'm going to come in with noise. I have nothing left to prove other than just doing for myself. I retired in 2020, being the best at my sport. It's hard to let go of that feeling of being the best. There's no better feeling. And that's why I'm back. I'm in the gym lifting heavy weights uh, four times a week. When I boxed, I was at my lightest 144 kilograms. I'm back now 191 kilogram roughly. So uh, a big change. I know I'm strong when my body is tight and tired. Like I'm growing. I can feel the strength just going inside my body. Early on in my career, people would say, Hafthor will never win the Arnold Strowman Classic. It's too, it's, that, that show is too heavy. It's too much just pure strength. Tell me I can't do something and I'll prove you I can. The muscle memory is kicking in fast and I feel a huge dramatic change week by week. Muscle memory is a real thing. I have shocked myself many times in this preparation by the fact how fast I'm gaining strength. I do cold and hot places every single day. I feel recovered, I feel better, I have less inflammation, I can train harder. I feel like with every year that passes, I'm always getting better. And that's with everything, you know, the sleep, the nutrition, the recovery, and that's what you want. You want to have a good routine to become the best. I feel like I have all the tricks in the books. I even hired my dad to make my meals, to know that I have my meals ready every single day. Eight minutes. I like to time my sets. I might go a bit sooner if I feel good, so I won't over rest or under rest. So I'll know roughly, you know, where I'm at. I feel good now, so let's fucking go. The closer I get, the more comfortable they get. The field of athletes this year is obviously packed. Strong field, strong guys. I truly believe going into this year's Arnold Summit Classic, having the deadlift first, I'm going to push those guys where they have never been pushed before. If I were them, I'd be scared. I'm 
excited for the future because I think we haven't seen full four yet. It is absolutely frightening to think that possibly Half Thor's best days are still ahead of him when you look at everything that he has already accomplished. I mean, 30 international competition wins, world's strongest man. He's won here three times, but in order to get back on top of the podium, he's going to have to find a way to knock off Mitch Hooper. Dr. Bill, we'll start with you. What does he have to do to do that? Well, for starters, I talked to Half Thor last night, and he's really relaxed. You know, his training's gone really, really well, and that should worry everybody because if you've got a relaxed athlete with his accomplishments, what he needs to do is he needs to start off with the deadlift, get an event win under his belt, and keep the pace. I mean, they, it's, it's all down to eliminating mistakes as much as possible because he stays in the top three in each of the events. He could do that. Yeah. half has got to be half, half door, mm -hmm. right? He has experience on his side. He's got his training, his diet, recovery, everything dialed in. You know, he, he knows what works and what doesn't, you know, after this many years. And the biggest thing, you know, he knows what he's capable of. He knows what these guys have done in the past, and he still believes he's the best. So you have feel good and that confidence on your side, that's a hard package to beat. That was a dangerous combination. We'll talk more about the men here uh, in a little bit, but let's turn our attention now to the women. And it is the same story with them, an absolutely loaded field. You have five former champions of this event who will be competing, and you have seven world's strongest women titles in the field as well. And they're going to kick things off with that elephant bar deadlift. It's going to be tough. This year is the toughest lineup I think that I'm going to be facing. The field is like, it's like totally stacked. Two of the athletes that I really need to look out for are Victoria Long. She is extremely phenomenal at everything. And uh, Rebecca Roberts. We've got a few new faces coming in. If you would have told me I was doing this two years ago, I wouldn't even have fathomed it. I think that we have a really wide range of abilities. We have some really statically strong women. We have some more athletic. Um, some that are more technical. They are more well-rounded, and when you're a well-rounded athlete, you're more of a threat. The only thing I can do better at the moment is be more mentally prepared and more focused than them, and just being like, you know, zoned in on what's at hand and being strategy. Uh, there's definitely a strategy. You know, it's watching what other competitors are doing, taking risks. You've got to know when to push and when to not. When it comes to loading events, it's like another animal that comes outside of me where it's in the moment. And like, I do things that I can't even explain. The Jack Stones, that's going to be a new thing. No one's got their hands on them, so it's going to be a wild card for all of us. I am most looking forward to the Jack Stone walk, partly because grip is my jam. Deadlift, it will be cool. My deadlift is always, again, one of my best, but we've also got massive deadlifters this year. You know, people have waited for Lucy and I to deadlift against each other for a while now. I would love to hit 700 pounds on that stage on, with that bar, but if I have to go more, I'll go more. I think we're going to have a nice time with some circus dumbbells. Probably most excited for the dumbbell event. Hitting the second to last dumbbell for maybe two reps, I'd be really happy with. The points are going to flip a lot throughout the weekend. It's going to make for a fun show. It's just going to be about who's going to have five great events. I just got to put it all out there. It's really just leaving no stone unturned. Well, hopefully, I'll be a three-time Arnold Strong Woman Champion. So we're going to shoot for that. She's already done it twice. Now looking for her third championship here at the Arnold Strongwoman Classic is Queen Victoria. And just look what she's done in her last six competitions. She's won five of them. The only one she didn't win, she finished in second place. But Kristen, she comes in with a gigantic target on her back. Everyone is gunning for her. How hard is it? to be successful in that environment when you know everybody is trying to come after you. Yes, everybody wants to take down Queen Victoria. She's the one that, she's honestly the most dominant athlete in this field. She's proven it over winning the last five of her last six events. She doesn't really have any weaknesses. She's really good at everything. She's a great presser, great deadlifter. She's really fast, really strong, really powerful. It's gonna be up to her to stay perfect and not make any mistakes. And last year, you know, she made those two mistakes and had to crawl back out on day number two and she came out victorious. But I think that she stays consistent. I don't see anybody taking her down. Well, Jerry, who has a chance of maybe taking her down? I think Rebecca. I mean, Rebecca came very close last year, coming here as a reserve on short notice. This year, coming here, being able to prepare, you know, prepare you know, properly for this show, I think she could be really dangerous for her. 
Dr. Bill, who do you think might have a chance to knock her off? Well, I have to agree. I think it's Rebecca, but you you know, you know, you really can't forget Andrea. Andrea is also uh, great in all the events. She's had great preparation, and you've got to put her right in the mix there. So also the deadlift. I mean, I think you've got to really – Really think about the deadlift as well, and, Kristen. And who do you I think? Also, I also think you can't count out Olga. Look at last yeah. year; she was literally in the in the running. She was gonna win, and she just had that unlucky drop on the frame. She's coming raring back this year, ready to take that title that was she was so close to last year. So I would definitely keep an eye on her today. I've seen the fire in her eyes in the back, and yeah. she's ready to roll. And yeah. Andrea Thompson is another woman who has a chance here. Yeah. She's making her fifth appearance at the Arnold. She's a three-time podium finisher. This year, she's hoping for her first appearance on top of the podium. Hey. <laughs> yeah, that's me. I'm Andrea Thompson, 41, from Ipswich in Suffolk, and I'm also a professional astronomer. Let's go. I have two children. I work as a progress coach in a college. You know, our definition of a strong woman is more like a mum who's looking after a household. To now see women in strength is such motivation. I never really thought about why I do the sport, but I think now having these teenage girls, I do it to help the future of the women just to be strong minded as well as physically strong. They can be strong women and have muscle and be proud of themselves. Y'all ain't seen nothing yet. Get ready, we'll go away. You go right, I go left. Put it work, trip and sweat, ain't even cap time yet. My mum, I remember taking place in a strongman competition in a local pub. We used to train with a lot of military men. They stopped training with me because I was outlifting them. Strongman is not just about being statically strong. You do have to be able to move and run around with equipment now. So I have focused a lot on, on getting fit as well as strong. I am a mixed bag of emotions. I can be really happy messing around. One minute I can be moody, stompy. You know, I can be empathetic when the time is right. When I'm actually getting ready to lift, I do zone out completely. Um, I do get very focused. The Arnold Classic in Columbus is actually one of my favorite events of the whole year. I really want to get my deadlift up. I want to get 300 kilos at the Arnold. 90 to 95 kilos for the dumbbell. A lot of people think that it's about beating everybody else, which it is, everyone wants to be the winner. And now at the stage where I just want to beat my own personal goals and just to smash the lifts that I'm good at. Now don't let the game run I am ready. And we are definitely ready. Before we get to action, before we close this thing out really fast, we'll go down the line here. Number one thing the athletes have to keep in mind as they kick off this competition. You want to have the leaders in touch. You want to keep mm -hmm. the leader right next to you. Also, you need to just keep the pace. Stay up with them, and you can be in striking distance and, and stay in there for the win. And I'll agree. You need to stay you know, within the, those top few. If you're going to be consistent, you're going to win. And just for the ladies, remember, this is where the magic happens. This is where it happens, and do your thing. So. Yep, they got to attack every event like it's their last, and then once it's over, move, put it past them and move on. Because yeah. you, you can't have a bad event mm -hmm. and still want to have a chance at that podium to be in striking distance come late tomorrow. Yep. And this crowd behind us is going to elevate everybody's performance today. Yeah. So it's going to be exciting to see. Yeah, you cannot win it today, but you certainly uh, can lose it. Let's take Absolutely. a look one more time at the schedule for today. We have two events. We're going to kick it off here in, in just a few minutes with the Women's Elephant Bar Deadlift. And then we will conclude the day of competition at 4.15 when we move over to the Timber Carry. Well, that's going to do it for us here on the Rogue Iron Game. Go get your favorite snack, settle in. We got a lot of action coming up as the 2024 Arnold Strong Woman Classic kicks off with the Elephant Bar Deadlift. Stay with us, everybody, as our coverage continues here from Columbus.
The wait is over. It is officially go time here in Columbus, Ohio, as we kick off the 2024 Arnold Strong Woman Classic. Thank you so much for being with us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland with Dr. Bill Crawford, Kristen Rhodes, and Jerry Pritchett. Event number one, the Elephant Bar Deadlift. I'm going to steal another phrase from you, a primal test of strength here. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Bill, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Uh, we'll get into the details here uh, in just a second. But uh, this is, I mean, we're diving right into it right off the bat here. Wow, I mean, you're going to sort it out really quickly. Who's going to step up on the deadlift? Everybody looks at the leaders. We're going to set some records possibly today. But I always savor those competitions inside the competition. Who's going to be third and fourth, you know, mm -hmm. and, and maybe try to edge up to a second place because those are points in the overall. Because we're not here just to crown a deadlift champion. We're here to crown a champion overall for the weekend. Yeah. And, and that... I think we're ready to start right oh, now. Yeah. So okay. we're, we got okay. the athletes uh, walking out. But let's take a look at the event description. It is the elephant bar deadlift. You're going to have... 30 seconds to make your lift. You'll have three attempts to establish a max weight. And the weight on the bar can only go up. So, Kristen, what are the keys here in event number one? I mean, really, you have to go in there and you have to not uh, rip that bar off the ground. That bar needs to come up. It's really long. It's flexy. It's got a bunch of movement. And if you're going to go in there and jerk it off the ground, you're going to struggle. And, you know, like Jerry said before, you, you lean over and that bar pulls you forward. They just really have to sit back, stay tight, pull, and... See what happens. Yeah, this is not a bar you can go up there and try to yank on. Like yeah. a regular Delaware bar, it will just yank you over. You have to kind of push this bar off the ground. And and this is, you know, one, you got to be really smart on your warm ups, how you felt, on the number you call for your opener. You do not want to miss your opener and, and lose that attempt. You know, so this way you got to be really smart on your body, listening, you know, how am I feeling this morning? You know, so. And I think you go in, too, with a thought of what you want to do. And like you said, with warm-ups, yeah, you, you know, depending on how it's feeling, then you make that decision from there. Yeah. I guess also you want to, you know, be able to, you take your first attempt, and you're like, wow, I'm, I'm feeling it. I've got it. Or uh, something maybe didn't kind of, you know, feel like it's something I want to go up as fast as I thought I wanted to. Exactly. Or you want to take that bigger jump because you feel good. <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right, we have Sam. <laughs> there we go. And Melissa Peacock is going to be first for no, that, that's the Sam. Sam. I'm sorry, Sam Bellow is going to be first. My fault. There you go. There you go. That's a good lift for Sam. Nice Waiting ball. on the weight on the bar there. So that was a 486-pound lift for Sam Bellavo. Starting off with almost 500-pound opener. For an opener. For the first one. Yeah. For the and she's first woman out. Easy. Yeah, she's worked really hard on her deadlift this uh, past year, she told me. It's just such a staple event. You, you won't go wrong developing a great deadlift as a strong man or strong woman because one, it's an event, two, it helps your overall strength. And it's the true test of overall strength. How much weight can I pull off the ground? Nice and smooth to the knees and she just locks it out. So kind of almost two lifts, Kristen, where you you know you get the flex out of the bar, get to the knees, and, and then shoot those hips through. Shoot the, the hips through. Erin Murray is gonna be up next. She's gonna have five hundred eleven pounds on that barbell. Again, the weight will only go up here. What are you looking for for a first lift here as far as a number? Uh, your last warm-up. That's what you're looking mm -hmm. for. Um, it depends on what you have. You know, if you, if you know like you want to hit 650, like this lift right here, you might open it at 575, close to 600, and take your jumps. It just kind of depends on really where you want to end up mm -hmm. um, and just how you're feeling in the back. So you can't really put like a... I can't really count a like a number on it. Percentage, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, just for those watching the deadlift, uh, you know, savoring the deadlift, I always think about the, the back to front movement of the hips. In other words, driving that hip through as opposed to trying to stand up. I think that's something that people, the really good deadlifters focus on that back to front hip drive. Yeah, I've, I've always broke the, down, the deadlift down into instead of a pull as a push is you want to push it off the ground because a lot of times you think of a pull, you bend over and you yank, yes. and then your hips come up and you want your hips easy. underneath you. That was a good deadlift. That was an easy pull for her. Murray's good at 5'11", making her first appearance here at the Arnold Strong Women Classic. We're already over 500 pounds.
I think also too, you know, you know, they know they're going to come here with an elephant bar, so everybody's going out and getting a bar that's a little bit longer, got a little more flex. Yeah. You know, just a re even a regular deadlift bar just won't replicate what this will do. Let's take another look at Aaron Murray's lift at 5'11". Easy for her. And it, you know, you watch here. It, As uh, the weights go up here, because where they're at right now, you watch, you're just getting a little bit of crown in that bar. And as we keep going up, you're going to see more and more crown in that bar as we start getting more weight on there. So crown, you mean the middle of the flex of the bar. flex of yeah. the bar, yeah. Right. Here is Angelica Jardine. She's also making her first appearance here at the Arnold Strong Women Classic. She has 500 16 pounds for her opening lift. Current uh, America's Strongest Woman. I was woman. just going to say current America's Strongest Woman, yeah. yep. When I watch this event, I always think about the, the plates. You want to, they kind of break this way and then come up. And that uh, is easy. no problem. Easy. Easy pull. And I notice a lot of these women have these longer bars, like you say now, to, to train on and prepare. And, yep. you know, that didn't used to be the, the case. No. You know, we used to have to load weights on the end of the bar trying to imitate that flex because we couldn't just get a bar that was, I don't know how long are those bars? Uh, this was like nine foot long. Nine foot long. Totally, you can't just yeah. find yeah. one of those. Regular so, seven, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I ended up, because I had made a Hummer tire bar when we were back when we were doing the Hummer tire, so I used it, and it simulated it pretty well. But, yeah, not everyone had that back then, but now, you know, with the, the Mammoth bar and some of the other bars that are on the market, there's more the ability to train something similar to this. Yeah, which can be a huge benefit. Yeah. Well, Sam Bellavo is going to come back out. This is now her second of three attempts, 516 pounds. This is still on the barbell. This will be a great, great deadlift for Sam. This will be a PR for her. Her, her biggest pull up to this point is 507, yeah. so she's going for a PR right now. Come she, on, Sam. She attacks this. She'll get it. Yeah. That last one looked really good. 234 kilos on the bar for Bellavo. She's going to get a real good drive off the floor. Well, she's above your knees, she'll finish it. She's ready. Come on. Come go. on, come Open on. Finish, finish it, finish it. Finish it, finish yeah. it. Oh, yeah. And Sam oh, will get it. She's, nice. Yeah, that's a huge Great. PR for her. And to do it here, yeah. she's going to be very Perfect. happy with that. Yeah, that's amazing. Jay, you both have talked about the crowd here. Yeah, what, the crowd. When you start hearing that, what kind of effect does that have well, on That's what I was you? just talking about. You know, this crowd back here is going to raise everyone's level. Mm -hmm. you know, and you can hear it. As that bar comes off the floor, the volume just does this, goes up, you yeah. know, and that just, just cranks you as an athlete. You it know? does. You kind of get an extra gear. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you'll do things that you weren't doing in the gym and you didn't maybe think you could do. She did. She really disciplined yeah. herself to keep the bar from flexing too much and just pushing her feet down through the floor yeah. to get to her knees and then finish it out, locking out. Well, you can see her, her driving so hard through that floor right there just yep. to drive that bar up. Yeah, it's amazing. Then she started to feel lift. it in the middle. She's like, I got yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, she knew once she got to her knees, she was going to finish yeah. it. Yeah, that was a beautiful lift. Great lift. Well, Donna Moore is listed to be the next athlete out at 531 pounds. Man, these are openers, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Times have changed, that's for sure. How much has yeah. evolved, right? Yeah, it's evolved a lot. Remember when hitting 500 was the best thing? You, like it was everyone's everyone's goal, mm -hmm. and now we're at what, Lucy's at 700. Yes, yeah. it's, it's just amazing how far it's come. It, it, you know, every every time you hit a hallmark, then it just turns into the norm. Like in men, you know, for men's strongman years ago, it was 800 pounds was the big deadlift. Yeah. 880 was the least. And, and then was it was huge. The 400 yeah. kilograms, 880. And then 900. And then it, you know, and then everybody's like, well, let's do 1,000. <laughs> well, why, not? why not? Why not? Why not? <laughs> a couple more. Yeah. And Mitchell Hooper had a, he had a, he had a thing on his Instagram, you know, just talking on Instagram, he's going like, is 1,000 pounds a big deadlift now? I, I think it is. It's still special, but. It's just the fact that you even ask that question is yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. But you almost have to have a certain like deadlift to be competitive nowadays. And for the women, I mean, you yeah. gotta almost have you have to have a minimum of 500 to even. Yeah. To jump in the and for the men, I don't know where you. Yeah, I mean, really to be competitive, you, you need to be at least 950. 950. You know, wow. Now it's wow. I mean, it's it's tapered off a little bit from what it was. So if you got over a, a nine, 920, you you can still be competitive. 
Donna Moore, one of the former champions in the field here. She won the Arnold Strong Women Classic in 2018. What was the women's record, like, say, 10 years ago in the deadlift? Like I said, Strong it was women. about 500. 500, 45, yeah. 500, yeah. Uh -huh. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing how far it's come. And you've got Donna, three times World's Strongest Woman. You know, she's coming in at a lighter weight, so it's pretty impressive what she's still doing. She's been in, kind of... Seen she's evolution with it. She's pulling barehanded. Barehand. Oh, wow. Flop grip. Wow. There you go. Nice. Nice. That is good for Donna Moore, opening up at 531. Wow. So, no so what would the strategy be with no straps? You know, if she's wanting us to get into the bar quicker and not take that time where you're kind of bent over, you know, because it does kind of mess it with does. you a little and bit. breathing and stuff. Yeah, yeah. you're breathing. So, and it... Obviously, she has the grip to do it. If you have the grip to do it, I mean, why not instead of taking that time bent over? You rarely see the mixed grip. Why is that? It's a, it's a better, easier lockout, double over. I mean, it's more natural to come through with double over than is that you kind of fight your body with that mixed grip. Um, so that's, that's why if you're going to go straps, you're going to go double over because it's a better lockout. Okay. I mean, you're just, over, you're just doing the uh, cross grip just to keep the roll out of the bar. And yeah. the problem is then you start getting those imbalances. Maybe your shoulders tilt yeah. one way or another way, or you tilt a little bit. So it just makes a more balanced lift. You kind of fight your body, you know, and, and you potentially you load that bicep when you when you put on your underhand. Yeah, so the straps oh, just Sam's. kind of make it a little. This will be Sam Sam's Bellow's final again. attempt. She's made 486, 516, and we will keep the weight at 531 for her. This is, this is tough. She's only had what, one athlete in between her here. This is a quick turnaround after but a she's PR. Warm. She's warm. She's yeah, warm. ready. That's she's good. That's warm. It's better than having 20 minutes between attempts, right? Well, this is a pretty quick turnaround. I, I think I'd like a, just a little bit longer, little longer. than this after PR. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but she's but, got that crowd. I mean, you hear that crowd? Yeah, she's a pro. She's got this crowd yeah. behind her. Yep. Oh, let's see it, Sam. This would be one really sick lift if she got this. This would be amazing. And we will see a she huge really fought that one. Yeah. I'd love it. Oh, yeah. oh, my goodness. I love her celebrations. Oh, yes. <laughs> Going she for really another that second attempt. PR here is Sam Bellabo. Final attempt, 531. Let's go. Dig in. Come on, Sam. Let's see it. We drive off the floor. Come on, Sam. Oh. Just the last time. Yeah, her hips fill up a little bit. Yeah, when your hips rise up like that, it, it's, it's hard to get any, any drive. And you're, you're all in the low back trying to pull it. No. Not going to happen for Sam Bellavo, but wow. a PR for it, her yeah. at 516. Yeah, she's going to be very happy with that. Yeah, yeah. that's a great PR. Yeah, that's a good PR, especially to do it here. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yep. On this stage, Yeah. that's, that's where you want to do them. Rebecca Roberts listed to be the next woman out at 536 pounds. This will be her first attempt. See the lower left-hand part of your screen, the stats on the elephant bar dead, uh, deadlift implement. Uh, if, you, if you've never touched this and you've deadlifted before, what's the first thing that you're going to notice when you try to pull that off the ground? I mean, it's going to have a little more flex than a, a normal deadlift bar. Like I said, at these weights are right now, you're not going to see it as much. Like I said, the more weight we get, the more live that bar is going to come. You know, so here it's, it's probably really more similar to a regular deadlift bar. What do you like about it? I always, I always really took to it really well. Uh, I know some hated it, but I, I always had the approach on deadlift of trying to push it off the ground and not do that yank. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if that's where the athlete gets a lot of their power, is kind of trying to yank it off the ground, it doesn't work on this bar because it will just pull your hips pull forward. forward. Yep. <laughs> I personally just think the bar is beautiful. Look at those plates. It's so, so <laughs> pretty. Yeah. <laughs> those are milled plates with Arnold in a double bicep pose. Amazing. There's a lot of a lot of hours in all that machining. And there is the Welsh Wonder Woman in her first attempt, go. and that is no problem for Rebecca Roberts. 500. 36 pounds for her opening attempt. I think here Rebecca's probably looking. She just wants to get as many points as she can. I think she knows she's not going to win the deadlift or a battle with some of these, these top women on the deadlift. So she just needs to get as many points as she can to set herself up to go in the next event. Yeah. 
just trying to get as close to the top as possible. Yeah. I don't know, she pulled 660 in the gym. She had a suit on, but she pulled 660 in the gym, so who knows yeah, what she might pull out today. So what are your thoughts about the start? Some of the, some of the athletes are looking more down at the floor. Some athletes pull their shoulders back and look straight ahead. I mean, I, ideally, like, if we want your shoulders back, but ideally, head position, you want your, your spine in a neutral position. You don't want to be necessarily looking straight up at the ceiling where your spine's cranked back, and you don't want to be looking at the ground where it's, it's bent forward. You know, you, you want to be in that position where you're kind of more just kind of looking out. Uh, you want that neutral position in the spine. So it's, it's less of the gaze and more about your back position. Yeah. And maybe just keeping, that, keeping your back silent to the first part of the lift as you rise with your legs, keep your hips down. Yeah, your, your point's going to kind of raise as you start coming up, right? Because you, you don't want your head Aaron flopping Murray. around. Nice. No problem for Erin Murray. Her second of three attempts at 536 is good. Strong deadlifter. We've had now had five Very athletes good. lift. And what's great about Erin is she's also coming in as a, a two-time, she's a, a low, one of the smaller competitors. She's mm -hmm. one world's strongest woman in the 73 kilo and 82 kilo, and she's the first woman to ever do that. So she's competing at some monsters, and she doesn't have all that size that some of those other women do. Well, strong is strong. It is <laughs> strong. This is strong. her first time <laughs> on the big stage, right? this is her first right? time on yeah. the big stage, yep. Really narrow with her hands, too. Yeah, one thing that really narrow allows, though, you, you, you're allowed to get more of that crown to, to utilize it to your advantage. Where the wider stance, you can get a better drive off the floor, but you're not going to get as much of the crown. Because when you're, when you're wide out here, you, the crown's not going to do as, as much good. <laughs> it's all a trade-off. Angelica Jardine will be the next woman out. This will be her second attempt. Her opener the, looked really easy. Yeah, yeah, 546, they're loading up on the bar for her. She already hit 516, so we... A 30 pound jump. Well, based on her first lift, I think she's going to go really. This will, this should be pretty smooth. I yeah. mean, that was. Yeah, her first lift looked really great. And she's an athlete that was really new to the, the scene. You know, she came in last year and won America's Strongest Woman. And, and here she's on the big stage now. So. Coaching lifters always say your first attempt should be the one you will make. The second one is the one you should make, and the third one is the one you want to make. Yeah, I was, here I was one of my first one to be my last warm-up. Yeah. You know, I was tying my warm-ups in the back, then my opener was my kind of first heavier warm-up to kind of start really feeling the bar, and then after that we're, we're working. 248 kilos, 546 pounds here. Second of three attempts for Jardine. Nice. Easy. Wow. She's definitely got more in the tank. Oh. So it'll be interesting to see what the, you know, what kind of jump do they make after that. And that's probably easier than she thought it was going to be. Yeah. I don't know about you, but you know, your first lift, you're out on the platform, you're looking around, and it's like, wow, I'm out here. <laughs> it's like getting thrown in the water. It's it's a it's a wake up. So I like what Jerry said. Your your last warm ups on the platform. Well, it's everything is, you know, that, that bar might feel a little different than you, the bar you warmed up on. The platform might be different. You're out in front of the crowd, everything. So you don't want it to be something that is any close to a max effort, right? And, and you just you just like that last one. Just let everything finally get loose, and then and, and you're ready to work the last two. And you know you have a good lift in, too. Yeah, it's building that confidence, too. Yep. Tons of power. Yeah. Tons of power. She's just such a new athlete. It's going to be exciting to see what she does. She got that mechanical advantage going and just, just took over. Donna Moore is going to come back out for her second attempt. She was good at 531, 551 pounds, 250 kilos on the bar. Come on, Donna. Watched her for a long time. How much she's given to this sport. She's been competing since 2012. She's been here for a long time. Mixed grip again. Oh, come on. Well, come on, Donna. Well. Come on. Come on. Come she's on. There we go. And she has it. She does. 551 is good. Yeah, she's very excited about that. No shoes, no <laughs> straps, no problem. <laughs> We're excited. That's great. Wow. <laughs> I guess you get style points, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Ten.
I was making the powerlifters happy. No straps. So they're the, yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, That's a purist right there. Olga Leischuk will be out next for her opening attempt at 556 pounds. Opening attempt. Yeah. Holds that discipline, gets it to her knees, and then pulls back. I mean, I, I tell people it's almost two lifts. You've got to get it to the knees, and then you can stand. I think that's where it's a little bit harder with that with that uh, mixed grip, that cross grip, when you get it to the knees. Well, the, the, the lockout's you got not, the as, crown, yeah. not as, because you fight your body a little bit with that mixed grip. Uh-huh. But she's strong, she, she nailed that. I think we've seen some very impressive lifts so far, and we're not even in to the, the, the latter part of the group. And some of those muscles girls haven't even come in yet. Yeah. So. And I mean, and the judges for the deadlift, I think they know a little bit about deadlifting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah a lot of experience out there. Yeah. And there is Olga, who's making just a last minute dash. Brad Gillingham is an eight time IPF world champion. He's pulled a hundred and he told me he's pulled over a hundred he's pulled a hundred and two eight hundred pound deadlifts. Wow. Double overhand. Wow. Olga <laughs> had to retrieve her straps before she attempts five hundred and fifty six pounds, two hundred and fifty two kilos here. Well it's kinda of, we're just you know, Chris was talking about you're a little nervous that first lift. That's why that first lift doesn't want to be a max lift or top you know, top end lift because sometimes this stuff happens, you know, athletes get kind of flustered and nervous and and something like forgetting your straps and having to run back and come back can also, you know, get you out of your zone. Yeah. You guys so. ever done anything like that where it's, you get out there and you're like, whoops, I left something backstage? Not, not no. straps. No. no, not straps. First attempt for Olga, 556. There we go. Easy. Easy. Yeah, yeah easy. Two-time Arnold Strong Women Classic champion. Yeah. <laughs> 2019 and 2020, she won it and, yeah, probably did not need those straps as easy as that lift looked. She yeah, is a powerhouse and has been for years. So I know she's back with a vengeance this year. Oh, that was that was a good opener. Yeah. Looked like her last warm up, yeah. nice and smooth. Even after with the fumble back and forth, getting the straps, she still pulls it easy. Well, we've now had six women lift. Sam Bellavo is the only one who has had all three of her attempts. Erin Murray is about to make her third and final attempt at 556. It's the weight that Olga just hit. That was so smooth and so easy. As it should be, the opener, right? Like we talked Absolutely. about, your opener should be easy. Yeah. And after the little uh, miscue with uh, the straps, yeah. that was that was perfect. Yeah. yeah. And Aaron's coming in with a 540 PR, so this two for her is going to be a PR if she hits it. Well, think about, you know, Sam, Aaron, you know, here in a little bit, you know, when we get into the 600s, we're going to forget about these numbers. And these numbers would have won a few years ago. 556 for Aaron Murray. There you go. Finish it. Come on, finish it. Finish it. Finish it. There we go. And she has it. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, she does. Wow. That's amazing. PR. <laughs> love, it. Love, it. <laughs> love it. For Aaron Murray. That's huge. That is a huge pull for her. Yeah. Great That's tender. exciting. It's also just great to see all these athletes do their best. Yeah. yeah. This is where you want to do it. Absolutely. Yeah. This is where you want to do it. Now, two women have made all three attempts. Just saw Aaron make her third. Sam Beliveau is also through her three. You can see the scores on the left side of your screen. We'll be keeping you updated on all of that we as we move through. And we still have six that haven't come in. Six other athletes who have yet to lift. So just wow. getting started here. And, and as you mentioned, Jerry, the we're going to be forgetting about these impressive numbers in just a second. Yeah. And which and these, num these numbers would have won. The, exactly. Yeah. It's crazy. Well, she got all the crown there. Look how narrow that is. It's perfect. Yep. No, she, that narrow stance, she's really utilizing that. It hurts a little bit off the floor, but. She's just wedging herself between the earth and that bar <laughs> and just pushes her feet down and gets it to her knees and stands up. I really like that. Well, Hannah Lindsay well, guess will monster. be next up. Her opening lift at 561 pounds, 254 kilos. The Swamp Monster. It's her third appearance at the Arnold Strongwoman Classic. 
She is Best finish was intense. third in 2022. She is super intense. Yeah, she's an athlete that gets really amped to compete and put on a show for this crowd. She's worked on her deadlift a lot. And that is easy, easy. for Hannah Lindsay. Easy. Yeah. <laughs> she feeds off the crowd. She loves it. Well, we talked about it earlier. This They've had to add seats to this place to fit everybody <laughs> in who want. And it's full right now. Right. They had to add seats, and it, they sold out like that. That shows where this competition's come. This is not beyond everybody. They understand this year is super special. Well, and they're all here to see the women right now. That's yes, what's even right, more exciting right, is that yeah, all right. these people are here yes. are for them. And I wasn't thinking about the men. I was talking about this. That's yeah, what yeah, I'm talking yeah. about, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> That's it. Yeah. <laughs> but she's a roller, too. I, she is. We talked about I, that. We talked about yeah. rolling. Yeah. Don't really see that a whole lot these days. Angelica Jardine is up next. This will be her third and final attempt. She is also going to try and lift 561 pounds, 254 kilos. And we'll be down to nine women remaining after this lift. No, and, and no offense to her, but I don't think she knows what she can do because she made those last two lifts look so easy. <laughs> Five sixty one for Jardine. There you go. Uh, easy. And that will count no so problem. Uh, she left she left someone <laughs> some out there. That was easy. That was Everybody likes to say, Oh, how many more pounds do you think you should get? I you know. She definitely had more. Yeah. Yeah, she yeah I think just left some. Being new and not knowing how that bar is gonna feel. Well, she had a great series. She's three for three. So, yeah. what goes into picking that weight when you if you've left more out there? Where did where was that calculation? Wrong? It's just being really smart with your training, knowing where you're at, yeah. and 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 that bar. You know, because that's that's where it's probably gonna throw on some of these athletes if they never pulled on this bar before. They're a little cautious. Well, I'm not sure how it's gonna react. But uh, if you're really sound in your training, you should know what, what you're capable of and how you're feeling. And, and you'll just see that with more of your, your seasoned athletes, right? Because they're going to know, oh, it's going to be a good day, it's not going to be a good day. You'll just know. Well, maybe sometimes a coach will be able to say, look, you can't control anything outside the middle of that bar. I'll worry about the outside of the bar. Yeah, if you had a good coach or training partner, I've, I've had training partners that can watch me and go, you know, oh, you're doing this, or uh, they can tell right away how I'm feeling that day, you know. They can put a little more weight on or not so much. Well, here goes Donna Moore for her third Come attempt on, at 566. Go down. Come on. Better get her hips down a little more. Get a little more drive off the floor. They have a 30 second window to make the lift, so she still has plenty of time here. Second attempt. Let's go. Dig in. 257 kilos. Pull, pull. Uh -huh. Donna Moore is going to settle for 551 pounds as she closes out her opening event. Now, four women have gone through all three of their lifts. We have eight remaining and five haven't even gotten onto the floor yet. We're past the mid fives. Yeah. Amazing. So we're probably going to see some over 600 pound openers. Yeah. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable how far it's come. But yeah. Inez Carrasquillo is going to be next and she had, this will be her opening lift. So she's one of the five who have not gotten out on the floor. She's going to open at 571. Get close. You see Victoria Long behind her. Inez has had a lot of really uh, great competitions. She has. I finished fifth here last year. Yeah, she was first appearance. Very upset with herself last year after the competition, and she did great. I think she went into day two in first place, right? Yeah, yeah. she was. She was on top of the leaderboard. She really, really had a, a great join. Sure, she's put in the work this last year to 
improve that this year. Oh, that was, uh, get uh, out of here with that. That was, that was easy. Wow. 571. That was easy. 259 kilos, like it's an empty easy. barbell for Carrasquillo. Unbelievable really lift. I mean, she was very controlled. Now, now, we're to, uh, we're to I really love how she was controlled off the floor. Yeah. We still have four women who have in. yet to lift. He's taking a look, another look at Carrasquillo's opening attempt at wow. 571. Carrasquillo, Lindsay, Lee, Chuck, and Roberts have only lifted once each. That was such a smooth lift. That was so fast. Really easy. There was no staging of that lift. She just pulled right through. Our two-time defending champion will be up next, Victoria Long, at 576 pounds to open up, 261 kilos. A little interesting. I mean, I, I kind of anticipate her maybe being over six for a starter, but hey, you know, what's her training been like? And yeah, and how she how she felt warm-ups, you know. You want this this opener to be just have enough so you you got a good number in the show, but it's still a last warm-up. Well, you also have to remember she had that hamstring injury last year. Yeah. So that can also be a factor, maybe you know, mentally thinking about that as well. Yeah. Opening attempt here for Victoria Long, 576 pounds, 261 kilos for the two-time defending champion. And that is easy. <laughs> that was awesome. Well, that answered that. That was the, day. the last warm-up. It's going to be interesting to see where she goes because I, I was... Wow. You know, wow. mid six is easy, maybe closer to seven, and she's, you know, maybe she just wanted to feel how the bar felt out on the stage that yeah. they. She could have cleaned that. I don't know. <laughs> she had that really wide stance, and she got all that super leverage going and just completely just came off the floor with. Yeah, she gets such a good push off the ground with that wide oh. stance. Wow. Jerry, you were like that. You like the kind of the wider stance. I just. Really, just turn it into a push like a leg press. You want to push it off the ground. Yeah. You open up like that, you can use your hips and your legs more to push it off the ground. Right. And it also shortens the distance, right? Mm -hmm. Shorten the distance a little bit. Yep. But now Melissa Peacock is coming out for her opening attempt. She's also going to go for 576 pounds, 261 kilos. She's had a huge improvement in the deadlift. I mean, she uh, I think she finished a little over five last year, which is yeah. you know a good lift for her. But she's opening at 576. Yeah, there's thoughts going through people's minds before they pull on a deadlift bar like this that you don't hear around a preacher curl bench. Nice, uh, easy. Great lift for Peacock. She's only three kilos short of what she pulled last year. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's that was a that was a stroke. That was nice. Very, very efficient lift. I talked to her before this, and she just really wanted to hit 600. That was her goal coming in here, and I have a feeling she's going to hit quite a bit more today. Ooh. That was easy. Yeah, yeah, that might be six. Might be her. She's on track for that. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Take another look at Melissa Peacock. Wow. Great opener for her. I mean, it just shows that you know spending time with the implement and understanding your personal stance and how you pull. I mean, there was just no hits whatsoever. That was just a straight shot. Very efficient. It's her third time here at the Arnold Strong Women Classic. Her best finish came in 2022 when she took fifth. Now, Rebecca Roberts coming back out for her second of three lifts. She's also going to stay at 576 pounds, 261 kilos. She was good earlier at 536. Oh. 
Looked like the bar floated out on her a little bit there. Her shoulders come over the bar. Sitting back. Second attempt here for Rebecca Roberts. Come on, Rebecca. Yeah, if your, your shoulders float over that bar, it, the bar's going to follow, right? So then it floats out away from you. Come on. Come on. Oh, come come on. Back. Uh, and unable to get it. So Rebecca Roberts at 536. Her last successful wow. lift, and this was only attempt number two for her. She's leaving a lot of points out there. Yeah, that's uh, this could be significant, you know, obviously later down the road. Yeah. Yeah, these are ones that come back and haunt you when you go into that last event. Victoria Long and Melissa Peacock still have the heaviest lifts at 576. Underdown and Thompson have yet to get out onto the floor. It'll be interesting to see what the next, what are they going to the next jump? Yeah. Well, Rebecca has an opportunity to take a break and then come back out and try for her third attempt at this weight. That's it, that, that is true. That's a deep hole, but you know, she's a great athlete. Maybe she gets it done. And it looks like she is gonna pass on that attempt. So Rebecca Roberts okay. will move. finish at 536. Let's take another look at the keys. Now, after you watch a little bit of this play out here, Kristen, you, these still hold as far as the keys are concerned? Uh, yes, you always want to finish the lift, control yeah. the flex, but it's really like, you know, we mentioned before, is you can't let your shoulders fall forward. Your right. shoulders fall forward, that bar's going to pull you out. So it's really just keeping your shoulders back and driving through the floor. I think also the strongman deadlift, strongman deadlift is kind of going through progressions. Uh, you know, years ago, people always just had their feet close together. Now you're seeing people move their feet out. And you kind of saw that, uh, you know, uh, Andy Bolton was kind of the first yeah. power lifter to do that. He moved his feet out, got all those leverages going, and some other straw men and powerlifters kind of followed suit. Not everybody, because, you know, it's not for everybody. I know you went that route. Brian yeah. Shaw, Half Thor. Yeah. yeah, I moved mine out. Um, a lot of athletes I've trained, I've moved their feet out like that. It, it, it depends on the athlete, but it usually carries over pretty well. You can, yeah. We're moving into the 600 pound territory now as Andrea Thompson is out for her first attempt. 601 pounds, 270 three kilos. She is just such a powerhouse and such a good deadlifter. <laughs> and that is no problem for Thompson at 6.01. <laughs> that. What can you say about that? <laughs> Not much. Wow. <laughs> hey, easy. She's the opener. <laughs> Anything you say about that's, you know. You're just talking. That was perfect. Well, if you're another athlete sitting there watching that, what's going through your head? I mean, it depends on what end you're on, yeah. you know. <laughs> it's, it's, if, if you're Victoria Long, you're like, all right, game on, let's go, yeah. you know. If, if you're further back, you're like, shit, I got work to do, <laughs> you know. <I> mean, <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Wow. Well, Hannah Lindsay is out next. This is her second attempt. She's also going to go for 601 pounds. This will be huge for her. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. Absolutely massive. You got this. Breaking that 600 pound barrier. Attack this. Come on, Hannah. She's got it. it. Finish it. Finish and that it. is good for Hannah Lindsay. Oh, 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 wow. Amazing. Great oh yeah, look at her. <laughs> Great <there. laughs> Oh yeah. Woo. Amazing. 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 I love it. <laughs> this is only the first event. <laughs> yeah. And we're not even done with it. <laughs> yeah. Who's Hannah here to win? Lindsay is fired up. Who's here to win? Yep. Love it. Look, she was a goalie was in soccer, college, so you know already <laughs> that's a little, you, you got to be yeah. wired a little differently to want to play that position. That's amazing. <laughs> wow, Hannah Lindsay. Second attempt at 601. That was awesome. <laughs> oh boy. So last year she said the nosebleed on her deadlift was the highlight. I think nosebleed on a 600 pound deadlift, I think she just, she tossed she it. She just yeah. tossed yeah. it. Yeah, that's amazing. 
Fought hard. Yeah, a great lift. We're going to have to get the, as you saw, the wow. cleanup crew out there for that. But I love to hold the top and yell at the crowd. That's awesome. I love it. That should be a metal song. Blood on the platform. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yes. Yeah. She's probably right got that. a little spare in there to can, get another pull. What do you think? Control at the top. You could go, depending on what her attempt is, you know. She can't get too greedy because that was a little slow there in the middle. The yeah. lockout was really solid. She's been a lot of energy though, too. And it's one of those things, that. you know, yeah. if she goes a little too heavy, that bar crowds as she comes forward. It's gonna be, you know, there she was stayed in really good position. Shoulders over the bar, hips down. <laughs> Just if, I think if anybody out there wants to go for a one rep max lift right now, watch this video every time before you yeah, do it. I guarantee you you're probably gonna hit it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Put that in the motivation file right there. That's it. And this crowd absolutely wow. loves it. And now Inez Carrasquillo is going to come back out for her second of three lifts, also at 601. So look at the difference in demeanor. You have Hannah coming out like a wild animal, swamp monster, and then look at her. I, so calm. So I, I like the both. Put yeah, on a show yeah. screaming, and you got the yeah. stoic standing there yep. ready to go. And the way her opener looked, this one should be easy as well. Yeah. Well, you were kind of like that, too, when you deadlifted. You were, yeah. you were ordering a ham sandwich, and you walked out there, man. You just, like... No, I was always just focused afterwards. Yeah, yeah you, you know, could let it go but yeah. There's got to be an internal dial that you got to have, you know, as the weights start going up and you get more, more focused, you know. I always had kind of stages I did for, for deadlift, you know. And, you know, over 800 pounds, I'd add a belt, you know, and I'd start wrapping my thumbs and just different things and just kind of start turning the dial up. Here comes Inez Carrasquillo. 601 pounds still on the barbell. We've seen two women make that weight. Andrea Thompson and Hannah Lindsay, the first two. Carrasquillo looking to be the third. Don't make me explain this, but she's built really well for this, for this uh, event. She's got good leverages. Yep. Yep. Yeah, her opener looked really easy. Goes back to it well. Ooh. Oh, come on. Oh, oh, that whip. Oh. <clears throat> A little too fast off the floor. Yeah, her hips rose. You see how that kind of hung her forward. You see how her, her back's rounded and it oh. rises your hips. A little surprised by that, but. Oh, just. A little too big a jump. So we've seen people rolling the bar and people not. So what's the benefit to doing that or not doing that? You know, a lot of athletes like it. They feel like they can kind of pull themselves, sit down into the lift as they roll it back. I personally never liked it because I don't like, I like to coil into the bar. And I feel like that stretches you out by doing that. And if you miss the timing on that roll, and, and I think maybe she did on that first one, yeah. And if you're too far away from your shins, that bar is hanging out here, and it's gonna it's gonna round you forward. Yeah. The beginning of that looked pretty solid. Where did that go wrong? I, I said, if you look, it it kind of it, it hunched her over, and once those shoulders open up and that back rounds, and you get a top end deadlift, you're not finishing them like yeah. that. You know, you're just you're gonna hang. Your hips come up. Your hips come up, and yeah, it's just you're not gonna finish them. Well, there's some people that you know they say you know that's uh, they get that stretch reflex we talked right, about. Right. Kristen, and, and uh, that, that can be helpful. Um, I'm personally guilty of doing that on my day. You're a roller? I'm a roller. <laughs> I, was, I was like a, a staunch, you know, that's crazy, what are you doing, you're insane. And then a really well-known strongman spent 20 minutes with me. And, okay. I'm, a, and I'm a roller. <laughs> no, it was oh. actually somebody else, yeah. Well, Rebecca Roberts, we saw her earlier decline her third attempt. Inez is going to come back out of the same weight and give she it a go. So she has some time to rest here. Yeah, you know, if she felt like she missed the timing on that roll, which I think she did, I think she, you know, wasn't quite into her shins yet. It was a little far out. You know, it corrects that. That might be a different, different attempt. But she's really got to focus on pulling that low back in and keeping those hips down because once she hunches over, it's, you're not going to finish it. Not a top end. Be a big lift for her because it would help vault her up the standings here. And yeah, she definitely wants these points. Four women have already all made their three attempts, and then Rebecca Roberts got through two. So five women are already done. And we still haven't seen Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> 
But she is the world record holder. Yeah, she is. Yeah. And that was over 700? Uh, seven, 701. Yeah, yeah right at seven. seven. So still only two women have lifted that 601 pound barbell, Lindsay and Thompson. 273 kilos. As so it is, it's going to take full advantage of the time to rest here. So how long are they giving them? Three minutes to rest? Three. Three minutes. So I last heard. So, so Jerry, what kind of, uh, I mean, you got all this time in between lifts. Uh, you're the other competitors waiting for somebody else. And what do you do? You, you just got to stay focused and just zone out of all this other stuff that's going on and just stay in what you're doing, you know, not to get distracted with what else is going on. You got to stay in your own zone. And the thing, too, is, like, you know, say these girls thought Inez was going to hit that and then hit another one. Like, you can't let that get in your head, like, oh, she missed that, you know, let it affect you. And that was another thing. Like you said, you just have to stay in the zone, and you just have to not let what other people are doing kind of affect you, and which is hard to do when you're visually seeing it, but that's that's part of the game. Well, mentally, the, you know, how do you overcome the fact that, okay, I just missed this. What does that do to you now as you make your second attempt? You just got you to forget about it. You got to just yeah. reset yourself and go, all right. You know, and just approach it as a new attempt, you know, because you, you can't get all flustered with it because it's going to completely take you out of your game. Because that looked more like a technical issue than a strength issue. I, I think so. Yeah. I mean, you're getting to a top end lift, definitely, but that's when those little, you mm -hmm. know, miscues on timing and stuff like that really, you know, are exposed. And I, I think she just missed the timing on that. As we are waiting for Inez to go back out, Hannah Lindsay has also declined her third attempt, so she's going to finish at 6.01. I, I would say that's smart. That's a smart. Is it, that, she she might a have a lift. little bit more, but to go out and really strain and pull on another one, she'd be able to save herself for the frame. Well, she said coming in here, all she wanted was a 600 round deadlift. She hit it. She's got to be happy with that. She's she got it. Now. <laughs> Depending on what Inez does here, we're already through six women. So half the field still remains, and this is Inez's now third and final attempt. So this will be through seven women after this lift. I would love to see her get this. I know we all would, but I'm just saying this just to it'd be a great comeback. Just a comeback, yeah. Great Absolutely. comeback. Crowd's behind her. Let's see it. Come on, come on. There we go. Come on, come on. And oh, the same so thing. That was a much better attempt. Walk. And she's going to call it. Yeah, they're, bigger. they're really tough to come back and get after a, yeah. a bad miss like that, where especially we, she really was kind of tugging on it. She's kind of pulling on you. It stretches out your back and everything. It's, it's really tough to come back and get those. Inez will settle for a score of 571 pounds. That's the lift that she hit on her opening attempt. Olga Lischuk will be out next. And we're going to jump up five pounds to 606, 275 kilos. Everybody talks about, you know, muscular strength, but I think, you know, in a deadlift or a maximum lift like this, it, there's a lot of neurologic, that that pop, you know, can, what kind of drive can you put into it, you know? Well, Because that's you, why people do speed training, right? Well, and you, you, have to, you have to lift in these big weights to, to condition your CNS to do this, right. you know, and to do this and not be completely wrecked for the next event, right. you know. So you have to do this heavy every week to condition your body for this. It's not only just getting strong enough to do it, you know, it's a different approach to, you know, powerlifting where you train to hope to have that great day. You know what you have to pull it today to be in the points and you got to recover from it to go to the next event. Right. right. You know, you can't just do that and have two weeks off and then focus on the next <laughs> meet, you know. Yeah, she wants the crowd. Look at her. Yep. Was that crowd behind us? Oh yeah. This would be a big leap for, for uh, points. This would be good points for her. The way everything's kind of going right now. Six oh six. Right, see it. For Olga. Come on, Olga. Come on, come on, come. On. Oh yeah, there she's go. got this. Good. She's got this. Good. And Easy. that is good. Nice. Good that was point. good. She's got a little room in there points. too. Big points for her. Yeah. Yeah, she big points. A little more if she yeah. needs it. Yeah. Was nice that pull. her second? Second attempt, yeah. Okay. There's one more. And that team works so hard. Oh, the 
All those guys in the blue shirts, the hardest working ones here. Yes. All weekend. The athletes have the easy job just to perform. <laughs> These guys got to move all the weights. Yeah. <laughs> Another look at the second lift for Olga at 6.06. And she made a 50 pound jump from her opener. She looks like she was just offset a little bit on her setup. Yeah, yeah. a little yeah. offset. A little might, bit. might have dug into that one yeah. chin a little bit. Yeah. I mean, she that just good, overpowered though. the bar. Yeah, but yeah she yeah, did. She Absolutely. Had, so much lockout strength <laughs> for it, it didn't matter. Uh, like 606. Now, All right, here we go. So, Mel's not the biggest athlete. This would be just a this will be huge. great lift. Yeah. Over 600 pounds. Huge improvement from last year. Yeah, she's been working on this lift a lot, so. Come on, Mel. Come on, there. Finish it. And oh, that yeah. is yeah. good yeah. 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 for Melissa Peacock, 606. Oh, on her second attempt. Right. Yeah, she's got some left, no question. Yeah, that was a huge lift for her. That was great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. That was that's strong, gonna, too. Really. Well, that and that's going to give her some good points. Absolutely. Because you got some of the top yeah. athletes that we thought they're already out. Huge points. <clears throat> but Lucy Underdown has yet to come out yet. Yeah, we're still <laughs> But having, you know, Rebecca go out so early and he's and Inez. Yeah, and Inez Both and these other athletes getting a few attempts. That's points on and that's gonna be big going wow. in tomorrow. Showing how the frame shakes out. She's still got something left. She does. It'll be interesting to see oh, what yeah. she comes out with. But look at her face as she's, she's backing away. She's just soaking up that crowd. <laughs> She'll oh, remember yeah. this one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And the next one. We're waiting to find out what Melissa's next weight is going to be because that is going to, well, that's going to determine if Lucy Underdown is going to come out for her opening attempt. Always hated the the lulls like this and the waiting. I'm not sure if you're up yet or, you know. Well, it's part of getting mentally ready. Like yeah. you get ready, you're ready to go, and they're like, "Oh, sorry, just kidding." Oh no, this athlete's <laughs> gonna go. Yeah, yeah. it's. Yeah. Underdown making her first appearance here at the Arnold Strong Woman Classic. I've actually seen where and now, where people ice the other lifter. They'll let the time run out on on what they called. Yeah, I've seen I've seen icing before. That's yeah. that's not a great way to make friends. Yeah. Yeah. Melissa it's Peacock like is a, it's part of the game. Melissa Peacock's gonna lift again, so okay. her third and final attempt. So she'll get three minutes, and she's gonna go up to six eleven. So her and Olga both have six oh six. Yes. So this is her attempt to bump up on some points. Yeah, it's Peacock and Lishak who have the lead now at 6.06. Lindsay is done. She's at 6.01. Andrea Thompson still has two attempts remaining as well. She currently sits at 6.01. And Victoria Long at 5.76 still has two lifts remaining. And Lucy Underdown again is the only woman who's yet to lift. Okay, when did I mean, you pull did, 600? Just, I was going to say, you did you 600? ever think you'd see the no, day no. where it's like, we're at 611 and no. old Underdown back here hasn't even lifted once. No, yeah. so I pulled six, I was the first one to pull 600 on this bar. I pulled 616 in 2020. Andrea came behind me, pulled 621. And we thought that was a lot. And the fact that oh, Lucy's is. pulled seven, I never thought I would see a woman pull 700, yeah. like ever. And the fact that she's already done it, I talked to her backstage, she's like, I have more. I mean, mind blowing. Yeah, yeah she's, I'll do so, more if I need to. Yeah. Well, Lucy Underdown is now going to come out for her opening lift as Melissa Peacock has jumped up to 621. That's going to be the next weight that she attempts. But Lucy will either be at or under that for her wow. first attempt. An opening over 600 pounds is just, it's unbelievable how far the sport's come. Yeah, open over 620. So, so, Jerry, we were kind of touching on, like, you know, you need to pull heavy and, and deadlift regularly. And there's a there's a group of thought that you shouldn't really deadlift because it's, you know, I, I don't understand that. 
Yeah, I, and, well, I mean, especially for, for competition, I mean, you have to, <laughs> you know, yeah. you have to pull heavy every week. Right. And you have to know for confidence, too, like, what can I do? You can't come in here and not be ready. You can't be prepared. Yeah. you got to be able to pull hard on days that you don't feel great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. you may get here and feel terrible, but you got to perform. Yep. So. And here is Lucy Underdown, her opening attempt. <laughs> Six twenty one. Opening it. Wow. Wow. Six twenty one is an opener. And that Whoa. was the world record four years ago. She's opening. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> easy. And that is well, <laughs> easy. And I can so easy it is. She's criminal. within 30, 35 pounds of her record on this bar. There you go. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's two hundred eighty two kilos. Amazing. Wow. That looked effortless. Nice. Great. Yeah. And easy. Great pull. And now Melissa Peacock will come out for her third and final attempt to try to match Underdown, who just came out and took the lead on her opening lift. That's amazing. This is going to be huge. She pulls this. Well, after this, we'll be down to our final three, Victoria Long, Andrea Thompson, and Lucy Underdown. Well, that's what we've been waiting for, right? See where this goes. To see the record change three times. Wow. Ta da. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to it. Yep. Big okay. Daddy Mel. Big Daddy Mel. That's her That's nickname it. now. <laughs> Come on, Mel. <laughs> attack this. Yeah, she wants the crowd. There is, I don't think there's an empty seat in this place. Wow. No way. This place is and packed. Look, they're all in their feet. Yeah. For yeah. This. 621 for Melissa Peacock. This is a tie for the lead. Let's go. Let's see it. Come on. Oh. Oh. Yeah, save it. Yeah. Save she's going to be towards the top at 606, and so now she's done. She's had a great day, Della. Uh -huh. And that oh, leaves man. us with three women left. Victoria Long, Andrea Thompson, and Lucy Underdown. All of them have only lifted one time. Shot of head referee Magnus for Magnuson. Victoria Long is going to be the next woman out at 636 pounds, making a 15-pound jump from the 621 we're looking at right now. That's 288 kilos. She's been sitting a while now, too. Mm -hmm. All these athletes go in between. When you've been in that situation, do you lift it all when you go back there? Or is it no, just see, that's another thing where your opener kind of has to come into play because mm -hmm. if you open too light, then you have the, the risk of what just happened is all these other athletes kind of fall in between you and your second. You know, so you, you got to be heavy enough to be out of that. Mm -hmm. If you know you're the, the top end of the deadlifters, you got to be heavy enough to get out of that. Let them fall out. That way, once you come out and your warm-ups are over, you're rolling. You just got a few athletes in between you, and that way your, your attempts are, are timed pretty well. Here comes Victoria Long. She was good at 576. He's jumping all the way up to 636 pounds, 288 kilos. This is her second attempt. This is kind of shaking out how we, we thought it was going to yeah. work. Yeah. Victoria and Lucy and Andrea. Wow, really wide stance for her height. But she drives so much. She has so much power in that. Yes. Yeah. So, so much, much drive power. On the floor. Yeah. I mean, she, she's super successful. So, you, you know, that's, that's just her. That just shows again, like, you know, she spent time with the lifts, and she's got her. There you go. Nice. Wow. Oh. That'll do. Yes. Game 636 on. is good. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just put my flip flops she's back like, on and yeah, head I'm back good. over. <laughs> uh, what's next, Coach? <laughs> well, it's just, it just shows you, again, how far we've come when that looks routine. Yeah. No. yeah. Unbelievable. Victoria Long now in the lead at 636 pounds. That was her second attempt. Andrea Thompson and Lucy Underdown still have two attempts remaining. Hmm. And Thompson is going to be up next at 641. And uh, my understanding of the rules, you can change your third attempt once. 
So if she sees somebody really pull a big one, she still has the opportunity to go make a change. Her coach can go make a change. The expediter's going to talk with her. Andrea Thompson was good at 6.01 earlier, now making a 40-pound jump. 6.41, 291 kilos. Three-time podium finisher here at the Arnold. But has never won. Oh, the crowd. Go ahead, Drew. See it. Come on now. Get it. 641 oh, for Thompson. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. It's That's good. It. Nice. That was a good lift. Wow. Oh, yeah. She knows. <laughs> She's got more to take. Oof. And she's only five pounds off her, her personal best right there. Five she's, pounds off her? That, wow. Yeah. Oh, I'd, I'd say she can go over that. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Be interested to see what she comes out at next. Yeah. And this is where strategy starts to play in, mm -hmm. right? You're looking at where people are at, what their points are, points are going to be. Start kind of like in your head, you kind of start going through points and too, like what do I have to do to, to get where I need to be? And one more look at Thompson, who had little trouble with 641. And, and that's important because as we mentioned, you only have five events. You're not going to win it today, but you can certainly take yourself out of contention. Yeah. Correct. Or, or set yourself up. point worth that, you know? You know? Yeah. Well, here you got to be really smart and listen to your body too. You know, because that was a good pull. But you can see a little bit of shake in, 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 in it. So if you feel any kind of tweak or something like that, am I smart just to stop, take third, let these other two go battle it out, and then I'm, I'm going to get ready for frame and not take the risk of, of doing something on a third. Yep. I'll go win the frame or have a better yeah. showing in the frame. So it's just, just that one or two points. Is it really worth that? It's where the you know, experienced athletes that are really good at listening to their body and paying attention to what's going on, they're, they're having an advantage. Well, I misspoke because we we still have four athletes remaining as Olga Leeschuk oh. is coming out for her fourth or far, pardon me third and final lift here. So right. After this, we will now be down to three. Oh, so my apologies to Olga because she was at 606 and now making a 45 pound jump up to 651, so, which is the current world record. 295 oh. kilos. So half the field, half the field has lifted over 600. As we watch Olga get ready, let's bring in <laughs> Melissa Peacock, who just hit 6.06. Melissa, what did you do during the past year to improve your deadlift so much? I just am a really good listener. I listen to my coach. <laughs> so, whatever he says. Well, certainly an impressive effort as we watch uh, Olga here at 6.51. Oh, come on. Uh, not uh, going to uh, quite uh. get there. Uh. Just rounded her back off the ground. It's, it's a hard yeah. lock out around your back. <laughs> Melissa, what does this crowd do for your ability to pull big weight? Sorry, that cut out. Oh, no, I was, I, the question was is that we talked a lot about the crowd and the effect yeah. it can have on athletes. What kind of an effect do they have on you when you're out there lifting in front of them? For me, firstly, it makes me super emotional. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's amazing. Um, you know, gym lifts are one thing, but that gives you just the, the extra push that you really need, um, just hearing the crowd. And it's so cool to be a part of this. Um, I think it's the biggest crowd in the Arnold Classic history, um, as far as I was told. So to be a part of that is really, really special. Yeah, you can see it in your face. You're thinking, wow, this is as good as it gets. Yeah. Look at this. Yeah. Just a flood of... Uh, of appreciation for where you are at that time. Yeah, but, and but a to great hear, lift. I loved watching it. Yeah, and to hear people saying your name in the crowd, and and also to know that I have like friends and family here watching is, again, this makes me super emotional. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. And you were here last year. Yeah. When was the first time that, that you got to compete with the men? Yeah. You know, on this stage, what effect have you seen that have on on the sport as a whole? Um, you know, I always I I have to think like Rogue and the Arnold team and everything for putting us on the stage with the men. Because um, we just have to be given this platform to show what we're capable of. So um, this just opens up more doors for us. Um, I think you're going to see the women at a lot more big shows in the future. So I think the best is yet to come, honestly. Right now, Lucy Underdown is going to attempt 666 pounds. That's 302 kilos on her second attempt. 
She oh. will hit it. New world record on the elephant bar. On the elephant bar, yeah. Yep. Fantastic. It also to underscore the they don't have it. They're not wearing any supportive oh, underwear. Oh, this other straps. This is a completely raw lift. Yeah. No so briefs good. or anything loud this year. Ode Haugen shaking his head. <laughs> What's going on here? That's amazing. <laughs> Melissa, you still have one event remaining later on today in that frame carry. Yeah. At the end of the day, what would be a successful day one for you as far as where you wind up in the standings? Honestly, um, I don't even have a goal for my placing on the frame. Finishing the frame is my number one goal, so hopefully we will see that. It's quite a bit heavier than last year, so. Well, you absolutely flew with it last year. I, We're yeah. excited to see what you do this year. <laughs> it was a miracle last year, so I'm just asking for another miracle this year. <laughs> Congratulations on your lift today. It was Thank amazing you. to watch you. Thank you. Yeah, great, great job, work. Melissa. Best of luck the rest of the way, and thanks Thank for uh, joining us here. Impressive performance. Thank you. Lucy Underdown, impressive. Wow. 666 pounds. Yeah, a little shake. I think her hips came up a little early. Yeah, hips rose, but some of that was, I think, some of that whip on the bar kind of pulled her forward in, in that shake. Maybe she just kind of, uh, that's the weird part about a top lift sometimes. She sits back a little more in the next yeah. lift, and she goes up a little bit, and she yeah, gets a little more out of time, it. She's had a lot of time, you know, and who knows what, you know, when she timed her, her warm up and how much downtime she's had in between. You know, that it affects you. You're a little cold going out there. Third and final attempt for Victoria Long now, trying to match Lucy Underdown at 666 pounds. We will only have two lifts remaining after this. One from Thompson and one from Underdown. Oh, oh, no, oh, no, no, uh -oh, no, 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 no. Oh, I need to see that. Oh, oh. No. damn. Hip. Oh. Hamstring. Hip, hamstring, yeah. There's Arnold Schwarzenegger looking on and everyone here hoping that Victoria is okay. <sighs> hey, I hate to see that. Yeah. This makes your heart stop. Yeah, you know. That was Victoria Long at 666 pounds. The medical staff is out there. We'll keep you updated on that. being helped off the floor and you just that is not what you want to see happen to anybody here and Victoria Long being saluted by the crowd as she leaves the floor here for her to fall back like that was, you know. that looked like it was probably a hamstring and I've been there. When, 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 when they go, it's like a big rubber band lets go on your leg. Especially when you know, you're, everything's tight and you strain to push in like that, and when that goes, it's, 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 it's the big bang in your leg. Now, you had multiple hamstring injuries. Is it easier to re-injure yourself after you've, like, you had the same injury? It's easier to re-injure yourself again or, it, it, like, rehabs? It can be, depending yeah. on what, what she did for it. The, the, the problem... Like I started to have that I finally kind of cured it with uh, PRP and regenerative was when you have all the little hamstring tears you get those little adhesions as they heal so it's like knots in a rubber band mm -hmm. so then that muscle doesn't work like it's supposed to um, okay we get Andrea well, we still have two lifts remaining here Andrea Thompson this will be her final attempt and Lucy Underdown depending on what happens here has one left Go ahead, Andrea. Let's we'll see it. The 666 on. pounds on the bar here for Thompson, looking to match Underdown to wow. force her into her third and final lift to win. Wow. I'd love to see her get this. Here we so go. Come on, Andrea. Come on. Come Andrea. on. Come on. You got this. Yes. Yes. Go yes. Go yes, go yes. Go oh. 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 Oh man, the way that came off the floor. Oh. I thought oh. it was going. <laughs> It was just Ugh. as it rose, her hips rose just a little too high, and it, you see her shoulders kind of rotate over the bar. I wonder if it surprised her how fast it came up. I think you know some of that that pop. That's where you, you really you don't you don't want to yank. You really you got to push it and be be patient off the floor with this bar. You got to wait on it a little push bit. Push your feet down. 
She needs this to match Underdown. Right. No, it's not going to happen. Out. Lucy Underdown yeah. is going wow. to win the opening event with just two lifts at 666 pounds. Wow. You know, here, here, here's the bad part of having deadlift first. You know, we, we love deadlift first because you're going to see potentially your biggest numbers when it's first. But everybody comes in ramped up for that big pool, and when you do that, sometimes that stuff happens, you know. It's just... And Lucy Underdown is going to out. pass smartly oh, on her passed. third and final attempt. She doesn't need it. She has the record. She wins deadlift. Or, or Smart move. Was going to jump up to 681. She's already got the 10 points in her, or pardon me, the 12 points in her back pocket. 666 pounds on the elephant bar for Lucy Underdown. Starts her first Arnold Strongwoman Classic with an event win and a record. Amazing deadlifts by all the women. <laughs> really kind of a... Literally, I walked in here as you were lifting this weight. I said to myself, this is unbelievable. I mean, how can anyone be that strong? I mean, it is fantastic. Congratulations. Oh my God. Thank you so much. It's, it's such an honor to meet you. <laughs> Thank you. Boss! Wow. A moment she'll never forget. Yeah. Never. Yeah. <laughs> no. I always remember that one. Oh, yeah. Look at her. See? Yeah. Like she's like, did this happen? That's cool. <laughs> this wow. isn't real. Wow. Cool. It was only the first event. Yeah, I know, yeah, right? Yeah. That was this amazing. happened because I'm just really strong. <laughs> <laughs> what an impressive performance from Lucy Underdown, who picks up the event win. All, all these women, I mean. Very nice. Be interesting to see what she could pull, because that still looks fairly easy for her. Yeah, I think she has, you know, it's hard to say. She had some yeah. more in the tank. Yep. Yeah. But she won. So there yeah, you go. That's amazing. Yeah. Yep. Olga Lieschuk looks like story. she's going to finish in second at 6.51. Okay. We'll have to wait for those official results. Well, this, this is really going to change things up now. Um, Olga didn't pull the 6.51. That's right, she, she failed at that. Yeah, she You're right. that one. But this, uh, depending on how bad Victoria's injury is, this, this really changes things. Olga will finish fourth at 6.06. .06. Victoria Long, again, we will keep our fingers crossed regarding her status. Andrea Thompson takes second and Lucy Underdown at 666 pounds takes the elephant bar deadlift. The men are coming up next. And I gotta be honest, I don't know how they are going to top what we just saw from the women. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I, I, are, are we gonna see a record? Is it possible? I mean, it's, it's, it's possible. Hoftor is, I think, capable of it. I don't know. I think it might be something similar to this where he won't have to right. push himself that hard. Um, I mean, who knows? We'll, we'll, we'll see. But they got a lot to live up to after these women deadlift. I mean, that was impressive. Where the, the bottom lift was 516. That's Half that's the huge. field was yeah. over 600 yeah, pounds. Yeah, it's, it's huge. Half the field um, lifted over 600 pounds. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> Crazy. All right. Very impressive. Well, we're going to catch our breath here for a second. The women are done. Men are coming up next. We are going to talk to Lucy Underdown. We'll also have Rob Kearney up here helping us uh, with our coverage of the men's elephant bar deadlift. So the competition continues here at the Arnold Classic. So stay with us, everybody. It's going to be a good time. As big weights are going to be going up as the men take the floor next.